New details on the fatal shooting of the inmate who escaped from Oahu Community Correctional Center. Good evening, I'm Diana Ko. New details tonight about a crash on Liliha Street early Saturday morning that left a woman dead. The man shot by Honolulu police in Waikele last week was arrested Saturday and remains hospitalized in critical condition. Strong winds also a worry tonight. KITV 4's Eliza Larson live from Anini Beach Park on Kauai. And he had the pink scrunchie on his wrist that everyone was talking about. Well, sure. Just waiting for him to put it on. Hmm. Where's your red scrunchie, by the way? I don't need it. <laughs> if I look like Jason. Actually, we wanted to get out into the field and see what it was that we were talking about with the meteorologist. So we moved over to Diamond Head Road, really near Kapiolani Park, where at about 11 o'clock, a tree fell. I'm going to step out of the way so you can see it. It's quite visual. As you can see over here, there's the uh, tree roots. And it well, Brenton, the October 7th from those body cameras show the last minutes of the suspect's life and a warning. Some of you may find this video disturbing. Uh, that's right, and I have a very uh, actually surprised U.S. representative because you were saying at the start of this year, he really wasn't uh, anticipating this for himself. When Paul Olivas turned 100 on August 22nd, he jumped out of a perfectly good plane. A leap of faith that life will continue to bring joy. And I said, what are you doing next year? I said, well, God willing, I'll make another jump. The Formy Armor paratrooper jumped into Normandy on D-Day in 1944. Master Sergeant Olivas retired after 30 years and three wars. World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. The Army brought him to Hawaii, where he and his wife of 68 years, Magdalena, raised a son, Edward. He's alone now, but not lonely. Get up in the morning with a positive attitude. Advice from the guy who served in the 101st Airborne Division. Don't sit in this chair a long time, because you get, you get chairborne. <laughs> so he gets out and tinkers with his cars. This is my, my baby. takes his baby for a spin. It's a 1964 and a half, 289. Perfect, beautiful car. I feel real young and I go out and drive it. Olivas' secret to living a long and healthy life is have a hobby. Taking care of this Mustang is his. And he just got his license renewed. And I'm good for two more years, baby. <laughs> so look for him on the road or in the sky or just out somewhere. You gotta get out and move. In Mililani, Diana Ko, Island News. Very often, in the quiet moments of the day, 85-year-old Mitsuko Heidke thinks about a time long ago and a place far away. August 6, 1945, the day the U.S. dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima and her life changed forever. It's really bright, fresh. Then, big noise, you know, boom. I never heard of such a noise. She was 12 years old and on a train to school on the outskirts of town. Had she left even 10 minutes later, she would have died because her house was near ground zero. We see the, uh, the mushroom cloud. So we thought, oh, we gotta go home. The train stopped and the kids jumped out and walked back toward the city. They didn't know what happened until they met some victims. All burned, you know, skins and just all the skins peeling and coming down like this. And they are walking like this. And uh, they all say, oh, I want a water, I want a water. But we don't have water. She says the memory is still shocking. Oh, you're into the walk right into the hill. Maybe I'm dead. Heidke lost her mother that day, as did many of the other students. Heidke says she often looks at these old photos and wonders what her life might have been like had her city never been bombed. She's built a beautiful life in Hawaii, and she hopes nothing changes that. She keeps track of the news on North Korea and Hawaii's efforts to prepare against a possible missile strike. One bomb is our Hawaii is going to be wiped out. I would rather die than survive. As for the state's new nuclear attack siren. Oh, that's going to scare me. I mean, I don't feel good. 
but she appreciates that the siren would let people prepare for a nuclear disaster in the way she was never able to. In Kaneohe, Diana Ako, Island News. I love to watch American Idol and see all that singing talent that I will never be a part of. Well, there you go. <laughs> Thanks for watching KITV4. Island News at 5. Find us on Roku if you're away from home. Stay connected by downloading the KITV4 Island News and Weather apps. And don't forget, our next newscast is tonight at 10. We'll see you then. I can sing. I've heard you sing. I can't sing. You've not heard me sing. A little bit. Really? Yeah, you just, you're always sitting there on your computer just singing away? No. <laughs> All right. <laughs>